Many of the tests performed in applied kinesiology don't actually test the exact muscles and sometimes not even the muscles that are supposed to be tested by that test. And in some cases they get different results. For example, if we test the deltoid muscle at one angle, we'll get one result. If we test it at different angle, we'll get, we'll get a different result. And if we change the position of the scapula one way or the other, the muscle tone will change. For example, the tone of the deltoid muscle. Even if we change the position of the head, like turning the head to one side and testing the muscle, we'll get one result. If we turn the head to the other side and test the muscle, we'll get a different result. And this isn't related to nerve compression. As it's often explained that turning one way supposedly pinches the nerve and turning the other way somehow releases it. This is related to the overall change in body position. There are simply body positions where certain muscles can work and certain muscles cannot work. For example, if a person takes center of gravity shifts to one side or another and some of his muscles start working while others start working differently. For example, the rectus femoris muscle on one side and the rectus femoris muscle on the other side. But this doesn't mean that this muscle is working or not working. If you change the angle a little, for example, rotate the thigh and test the same muscle, this muscle will be very strong. If you change the angle a little, turn it the other way and test the thigh, then the muscle can't generate force. This is not because the muscle is damaged, yeah, and it's not because there's a problem with the muscle's innovation. It's related to the position of the body itself. That is, there is a habitual body position in which some muscles are always tense and some muscles are always sort of weak. Besides that, some of the tests are just incorrect. For example, the test for the lumbar muscle lie on your back. On your back, the test for the lumbar muscle, the classic test for the lumbar muscle. So, in this case, the leg turns outward. And from this position, with different placements, it doesn't matter how. The muscle is tested, and it's supposedly the lumbar muscle being tested. Why can't this be the lumbar muscle? Try to tense your triceps, and then try to bend your arm using your triceps at the same time. The same thing happens when you test this muscle. When you turn your leg outward like this, Turn your foot outward and from this position you turn it over here. At this moment place your hand on your gluteal muscle when you have turned your leg outward. The gluteal muscle is currently tense contracting and in a state of tone. So try to tense your gluteal muscle and turn your leg outward. It contracts very well. Aditsu. Now try to turn your leg inward and tense your glute. You won't be able to do it because in this position it relaxes. The lumbar muscle and the gluteal muscle are antagonists. They can't work together. Either one works or the other works. When the gluteal muscle tenses, the lumbar muscle relaxes. When the lumbar muscle tenses, the gluteal muscle relaxes. This leg position is for maximum activation of the gluteal muscle, the position of the thigh. And in this position, we completely disengage the lumbar muscle meaning the leg is held up. Move your leg up, up. So, this effort is made only by the oblique abdominal muscle and the gluteal muscle. At this moment, these two muscles are engaged. The leg is in this position. Now, lift your leg up yourself. It starts working thanks to the oblique abdominal muscle and the gluteal muscle. If the lumbar muscle engages at this moment, it will simply get injured. If somehow, the lumbar muscle manages to, to tense up right here.
it will get injured. So they test it, they do this test, they test, that's at the incorrect angle, and test the oblique abdominal muscle. And to activate it, they start as if they're, they're massaging the lumbar muscle, but in fact, they're just toning the oblique muscle. It's easier for it to create this kind of effort afterward. To maximally activate the lumbar muscle, or the front surface of the thigh, you need to deactivate the gluteal muscle. To deactivate the gluteal muscle, you need to do this movement, internal rotation of the thigh. Turn your thigh inward with your knee, put your hand on your glute and feel your glute. In this position, it relaxes and stops working. And in this position, the front of your thigh can actually create the maximum effort. This muscle is activated to the fullest, right in this position. Up. Try pushing upward. It's not possible to activate the muscle. You can place your hand on the muscle and feel that it doesn't engage in that direction. And many other tests are exactly the same. For example, I can get any here. Lie on your stomach. I can get any test result just by changing the position of the body. So, let's say I turn the foot a little this way and test the hip extensor, right? It's very strong. Then I turn it this way, test the hip extensor, and now it doesn't work. It's not because it's not working. It's because at this angle, the muscle itself can't function as the abedral, simply because this position is meant for moving forward. So there are positions, the positions of certain body parts, like for example, the foot, the position of the shin, the abedral, the position of the thigh, for moving forward, for moving backward, for pushing forward, backward. Each part of the body has its own position for this. If a person starts making movements in a position not meant for that muscle to work, he injures both the muscle and the joint. And this is what happens. That is, the kinesiologist tests the muscle in the wrong position. There's even a test where they act like they're testing different heads, different parts of the hip extensor, the semitendinosus, the biceps femoris, they change the angle, right? And if this movement changes, if, if the position of the leg changes, if you turn the leg from this position to this one, for example, then never this muscle right here. It's better for it not to contract in this position. I mean, it just can't do it. It's the same with the glute. Now, if I test the glute, if I turn a bit this way, like this, rotate the thigh like this and test, push upward, push upward. That is, the glute muscle can generate its maximum force. But if I turn it a bit this way, for example, upward, in this position, it simply can't generate any force. This doesn't mean that it's weak. This doesn't mean that it's strong. It means that you're doing the test in a position where this muscle can't generate any force. And it's the same with any other muscle. The gluteus medius test also turns out to be incorrect. So if we turn the leg like this, yes. In this position, the gluteus contracts and the oblique muscle also contracts. From this rotation, we begin the test. Push up. So we're testing the gluteus and the oblique abdominal muscle. To activate the gluteus medius, you need to exclude the oblique and the gluteus maximus from the test. For that, you need this kind of rotation. I mean, you have to turn completely like this so that the tension leaves the glute. This kind of internal rotation. If you turn like this, the oblique is also excluded. Press upward as well. You can do it from this position. The middle one is tensing up. Can you feel the difference? Here, it's tense now. But when you rotate like this, the glutes tends up instead. And it's the same if you do the test for the quadratus lumborum muscle. Lie on your side, on your side, on your side, on your side, on your back, on your back. The quadratus lumborum muscle. So if we put your leg like this during the test, let's see, what are we going to test? We're going to test the oblique abdominal muscle. Because in this position, you see, in this position, the glute can work. If the glute activates, then the oblique will activate together with it. If we turn like this, push. Do you 
feel it tensing more here. That is the oblique muscle working. Yes. You need to turn like this. If you turn like this, if for some reason you need to test it to really turn off the glute, then see, it tenses in a different place or not. Push. Do you feel any tension? Yes, a bit in the back, right? It activates right here. That's why many of these tests are incorrect. Same thing. Here, sit down. They're testing the straight, the oblique abdominal muscle test. So, this is how the test goes. There's a turn, straighten up, and when testing, they lean on this leg and this shoulder, and they do the test. And here, the test is not for the oblique abdominal muscle, because at the same time, the thigh is forced to lift up. So all the load, I mean, you're also pressing against me with your thigh at the same time. Here, the latissimus dorsi muscles are engaged. I've noticed many times that when they do this test... Turn around? No, the latissimus dorsi muscles. Well, when they test me, I've noticed that my lats, the lats are working right now. Right now, I don't really feel the oblique working at all. For the oblique on this side to engage, the oblique muscle on this side can't work with the thigh right here. For it to work with the thigh, either it shouldn't be the thigh, but the glute that needs to be engaged, so you can engage it together with the glute. Well, like downwards like this, so that it somehow presses with the leg, or lean on this leg, like this. Then with this leg, push up a little too, like that, yeah. Now it tenses here, right, in, in a different spot. It's not a lat anymore. And that's why these tests, these little wrong details, they just don't work out right. But besides that the body takes certain positions, I mean, the simplest and uh, most basic thing about this is that, for example, if you shift your body weight onto your toes, it's the same as standing in high heels. The back side of your body turns off and the muscles in the back stop working. Shifting your body weight onto your heels makes the front part of your body feel like it's turning off. Although it doesn't actually turn off, it's a body position where certain muscles lose their tone, while others, on the contrary, become overly tense. And there's a habitual body position from which a person starts to make all movements. In this position, some muscles are activated, while others are deactivated. And when they start testing and finding weak and overloaded muscles, it's not a test of these individual muscles, it's a test of the posture the person is in. And so, for example, let's say I find a muscle, a weak muscle, right? Let's say I found a weak muscle. I think it's weak, it's not working. So I find it and it's not working. Why are there so many different kinesiological methods? They catch parasites there. They do anything with the uh, muscle, whatever they want. You can tone a muscle in any way. One way is just to make it contract for about five seconds. Give it this kind of effort, then relax and it will be stronger during the test. That is, it will be able to exert more force during the test. So, we've kind of toned this muscle, right? But if you give it a load now, if the person just walks around or just lifts their leg a few times, so, in the test, we've kind of brought this muscle back to normal. Movement happened. And when we test again, this muscle will stop working. It can't activate, while another one for example, another muscle can handle the load very well. And here the problem isn't with the muscle itself. We can keep activating it forever. We can do something with the kneecap. Massage the muscle here or rub it like this. Any irritation of the muscle will cause a temporary increase in tone. The issue is that both the angle of movement and the habitual angle are incorrect. Here, this is the position of the thigh in which the rectus femoris muscle cannot work. 
it needs to change even in this position. Then the muscle can generate maximum force because uh, we are trying to activate a muscle that, that if it contracts in this state will simply get injured. So, we're trying to lift the leg knot with the straight thigh muscle but with something else, with some other muscles. And in this way, by chasing after a weak muscle, after a tense muscle, as a result, it turns out that on the table everything works out, we tone some muscles and relax others. But as soon as movement begins, everything comes back again, this muscle imbalance. Exercises help because we restore the muscles individually, so exercises that isolate each muscle are more effective. But as soon as everything starts moving together, it all falls apart again.